Welcome to the Solid Signal Podcast. The date is March 11th, 2019. You know, it occurs to me that in about two and a half months, uh, Game of Thrones will be over forever. Game of Thrones, it's not that I need to explain it to you, but Game of Thrones is the most expensive series in history, the, the most comprehensive adaptation of a book or series of books in history, and possibly the best moneymaker of any television series in history. It's, it's got to be worth the money that HBO is paying for it, or they wouldn't pay for it. And how much are they paying for it? It's hard to know, but it looks like the most recent series, uh, season eight, is going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $700 million to make. So let's just say it's pretty safe that they spent four or five billion on it and they're getting a return on their investment. Obviously, they wouldn't do it if they weren't. Game of Thrones stands apart as this kind of singular achievement, and especially if you compare it to something like, for example, the Harry Potter books or the Lord of the Rings books, which were massive movie adaptations, but nowhere near what you're seeing with Game of Thrones. It is taken about 78 hours to tell this story, and fans of the books tell me that they even left out stuff. They probably could have gone another 40 or 50 hours on just stuff that they cut out, which is kind of impressive in its own way, and hard to know what they left out, whether or not it was really worth it, because it's it's such a dense thing that it's it's hard to get through anyway. Game of Thrones is just the latest iteration in the kind of show that has only been possible for the last decade or so. I think that if you if you look back on a show like Lost, even though that hasn't weathered very well, and, and, and honestly, the, uh, the last season of it turned a lot of people off, you, you see a very different kind of show than was possible in the 20th century. Why? Because of the internet. Because not only are there user groups and fan groups that can obsess over every detail, but more importantly, there's stuff like IMDB that let you go back and say, now, who was that person again? Which I have to tell you is pretty invaluable if you're going to be watching Game of Thrones. Uh, it's, it's practically impossible to remember who every single person is, uh, especially over the course of the almost 10 years you'll be watching this show unless you started late and then you're binging it. And even so, it's so incredibly dense, you end up asking yourself, uh, who who is that guy again? And why why does he deserve to die? More importantly, uh, the finale of Game of Thrones, whatever tends to happen, has to be a little bit of a source of concern for HBO, its parent company, Warner Media, and its parent company, AT&T. Disclosure, Solid Signal is also an AT&T dealer. Because this show has been a major driver for HBO in a time when premium channels are increasingly being defined by the kind of original programming they have, HBO has had the most impactful show in history to fall back on once a year. Now, obviously, there's some concern about replacing that, but I will tell you something. If you've been following HBO's original programming for the last almost 20 years, every time a major show ends, there's this question, oh, what are you going to do next? You know, The Sopranos ended. Oh my gosh, what are you going to do next? Sex and the City ended. Oh my gosh, what are you going to do next? Curb Your Enthusiasm ended and started and ended and started and ended and started and maybe has ended again. I don't know. Oh my God, what are we going to do next? What they're going to do next is put a lot more original programming out there and see what sticks. There are a lot of other shows on HBO that are really excellent. Insecure is one that really gets a lot of attention. The Deuce, I personally did not like it. I thought it was appropriately named, and I won't go into more detail. Uh, But um, it is pulling in the numbers, I will say that. Um, Jake Buckler is going to talk this weekend about another show, Crashing, which again, not my cup of tea, but uh, also pulling in the numbers. There's a lot of great programming on HBO. And just to say that HBO equals Game of Thrones, that's kind of silly. That's kind of ridiculous. Obviously, it's a halo show for them. It's a it's a top, top rated show that gets people to look at the app and look at the channels to see what else they might be interested in. But 
it doesn't mean the end of HBO just because it's the end of Game of Thrones. What it does mean is the end of a lot, a lot, a lot of money being spent on that. We may never see that happen again. We may never see that level of cash being spent on a TV show ever again. It may stand as one of those high points in history when, well, TV was still capable of supporting that kind of thing before, you know, content creators on YouTube just started doing it all for free. I don't know. I don't know about that, but I do know <clears throat> that I wasn't worried about HBO when Sex and the City ended. I wasn't worried about HBO when The Sopranos ended or Deadwood or Rome. And I won't be worried about the, the service when Game of Thrones ends. I guarantee there's a ton of great content that is out there for you to watch. As a matter of fact, I would appreciate if you would be willing to give HBO a try, especially if you're a DirecTV subscriber. If you have any questions on how to do that, call the fine folks at Solid Signal 877-312-4547. That's my commercial for the day. Anyway, that's about it. Don't be worried too much about HBO. Enjoy Game of Thrones while you have it. There are just eight episodes left. Go back and binge the rest. There's still time. And I will talk to you more next week.